Hey there, my little saddlebag squids, my comfort foam gel core touring seat stands, and my AM FM radio compatible batwing fairing. Friends, you read the title, we're talking about the best touring motorcycles today. Not sport touring, not adventure touring, just good old fashioned comfort plus transcontinental dad mode jean shorts, new balance sneakers, flame do rag touring. Let's get into it. First touring motorcycle on the list today is the Honda Goldwing. I could honestly make an entire video on why the Goldwing is the best touring bike full stop, but that may be a video for another day. The Goldwing has been in continuous production since 1974. In the nearly 50 year production run, Honda has sold over 640,000 Goldwings, and since then it has become practically a household name. Honda's influence and pedigree has shaped the motorcycle space countless times with bikes like the Super Cub and CB750, and the Goldwing is right up there as one of the greats. This motorcycle was Honda's first attempt at cashing in on the over 750cc cruiser market that Harley Davidson had a stranglehold on in the US at the time. Honda was actually able to sidestep the Reagan era import taxes by manufacturing these motorcycles in Marysville, Ohio. The Goldwing was one of the first motorcycles that were truly touring capable. They had a powerful water-cooled four-cylinder engine, a shaft drive for minimal maintenance on long trips, and enough space for a comfortable seat plus plenty of luggage. The Goldwing is still a flagship touring motorcycle from Honda and continues to be an industry frontrunner in the segment after many updates over the years. In the 2023 model year, the touring behemoth is powered by an 1833cc horizontally opposed six-cylinder engine that's putting down 125 horsepower and 130 foot-pounds of torque. It has a six-speed transmission with an overdrive gear for low RPM cruising on high-speed interstate highways, as well as a reverse gear for lumbering this 850-pound machine around a parking lot. Like most touring motorcycles these days, the Goldwing is currently outfitted with a large suite of tech features for both performance and comfort. All trim levels come with switchable ride modes, an electronically adjustable windscreen, smartphone connectivity, and a full audio system, cruise control, heated grips, and more. Essentially, the Goldwing is equipped with just about anything you could need to comfortably ride for hundreds if not thousands of miles at a time. The Goldwing also comes in a touring trim that has extra luggage and improved passenger accommodations. The Goldwing is also available with Honda's automatic dual clutch transmission if you're into that sort of thing. The base trim for this motorcycle will go for an MSRP of $25,600. It's as close as you can get to a car on two wheels. They are super nice to ride. It's hard to talk about touring motorcycles without talking about Harley Davidson. HD sells plenty of touring bikes to dads and grandfathers who believe they're going to rediscover their youth during a cross-country adventure in the saddle of a rumbling V20. American machine. Whether you're touring to Beirut or the bar down the block, if you bleed red, white, and blue, you're probably interested in some touring motorcycle from Harley Davidson. Harley does this thing where they make these bikes that are kind of the same but consider them different models entirely. For instance, for touring machines, the Bar and Shield makes both the Road Glide and the Street Glide. To the layperson or the fast boy, or honestly most people not entrenched in the brand would probably say they look pretty darn similar to me, and that's because they are. Both the Road Glide and the Street Glide are built on the same frame with nearly identical dimensions. They're both powered by a 107 cubic inch M8 engine that makes 92 horsepower and 111 foot pounds of freedom units. The Road Glide and Street Glide special models make use of the 114 cubic inch M8 engine that is making a little bit more power at 112 ponies and 118 foot pounds. But I'm mostly going to talk about the standard version because it's honestly just too much. The Road Glide Special, Road Glide ST, Road Glide CBO, Road Glide BBC, when will it end? So for the Road Glide and Street Glide, they begin to differ with the style of fairing and handlebar used. The Street Glide uses the classic batwing fairing that's mounted to the forks, whereas the Road Glide has a larger frame mounted fairing and more pulled back handlebars. While the Road Glide does weigh about 25 pounds more than the Street Glide compared to a fork mounted fairing, the frame mounted fairing keeps a lot of the pressure off the rider's hands and arms and makes it more comfortable for sustained highway riding. Both bikes feature the same suspension, brakes, and infotainment tech package. The Road Glide and Street Glide both have an MSRP of $21,430 in the vivid black colorway. ABS and RDRS Safety Suite are available for an extra charge, but in my opinion, you're getting a whole lot more with the Goldwing, baby. It's been pretty quiet on the roads lately, and until recently, I couldn't put my finger on why, but you might have noticed as of late, it's because of all those electric motorcycles, and with climate change and a depleting fuel supply, it's kind of easy to see why, although it is kind of sad. Around the end of this year, we all start taking inventory. As the calendar turns, we start to reflect on the future and what we could have done differently in the next 12 months, and for some of us, we might be taking inventory in a more literal sense. I mean, who can't relate? 
We're no financial experts, but it's hard to ignore at this point. Retirement savings might be drying up. The stock market's in a ditch with nearly every market in the red. Couldn't you use a little more extra money in your pocket? Today's sponsor started out with an innovative idea and I'm excited to share it with you. Just like a vintage motorcycle or car, physical assets can increase in value over time, even when traditional investments are in the hole. Historically, the rich turned to precious metals, oil, or real estate, finite resources with limited supply. These assets hold inherent value, which isn't necessarily affected by other markets. With Masterworks, you can invest in the wealthy's worst kept secret, contemporary art. You see, art also has a limited supply, and art Art from critically acclaimed artists can appreciate in value as time goes on. Most of us don't have millions of dollars to invest in collectibles like this, but with Masterworks, you can invest in blue chip art for a fraction of its full value. This isn't NFTs, this isn't cryptocurrency, this is the stuff you see in museums, and about 600,000 people have signed up so far, and with results like these, it's easy to see why. Offerings have sold out in minutes, so there is a wait list, but my subscribers can get prior priority access at the link in the description. You have to see important regulation A disclosures at masterworks.com slash CD. But guys, click the link down below to Masterworks and join the Yammy Noob waitlist. You'll be glad you did. Thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the show. BMW is another motorcycle company that is no stranger to touring motorcycles. They were an early adopter of the luxury touring motorcycle when they released the BMW K100, known as the Flying Brick, in 1982. Since then, the K-Series has evolved to the K-1100, K-1200, K-1300, and since 2011, the K-1600. The K-1600 comes in a few different trims, ranging from sport touring to a more stripped-down bagger model, but since we're talking about big bad tourers today, we'll talk about the BMW K-1600 GTL. The K1600 is powered by a 1649cc inline six-cylinder engine that is making a whopping 160 horsepower and 138 foot-pounds of torque. This motorcycle is equipped with plenty of creature comforts for long-distance touring, such as a 10.5-inch TFT display, so you can watch all that sweet Netflix while you're out on the road, which is almost absurdly large in my opinion, an air-conditioned phone charging compartment, a full audio system, and heated grips and seat. To help tame those 160 ponies, because come on, you're here for a leisurely stroll through the countryside, not drag racing Hayabusa's on the freeway, there's a whole suite of BMW rider aids like selectable power modes, traction control, engine brake control, and hill start control, which may come in handy while trying to keep this nearly 800 pound motorcycle from rolling backwards down a hill. There is plenty of luggage on the GTL which are lockable using the wireless key fob or removable entirely. The K1600 GTL has a base price of $16,895, which is a pretty good deal. Okay, Vulcan simps, here you go. The next bike on the list is a Kawasaki Vulcan 1700 Voyager. A Kawasaki Vulcan made the list and it's not even a joke video. You're welcome. The Vulcan 1700 is the largest and most equipped Vulcan for long distance touring. At its heart is a 1700cc or 104 cubic inch for the Harley Cross shoppers V-twin engine making it claim 73 horsepower and 108 foot-pounds of torgos, which given the size and configuration and looking a little bit worse than Harley numbers. Unfortunately, this bike kind of lives in the shadow of many other touring motorcycles in the segment. It doesn't make all that much power, nor does it have anywhere near the tech features that many other bikes, but where the Vulcan Voyager has others beat is the price point. The 2023 model year has an MSRP of $19,299, but I've heard plenty of stories of dealers having highly discounted Vulcans in their inventory, in which case a fully capable touring bike for closer to sixteen dollars might make a case for itself. The Vulcan doesn't have a particularly high-end tech package, but it does have some cool retro style like the big retro looking analog gauges. It does feature a sound system, but is pretty simple and scaled back without Bluetooth or smartphone connectivity. It has a good amount of lockable luggage, comfortable seating and passenger accommodations, and cruise control. The Vulcan 1700 Voyager is a classic stripped down touring bike that isn't really trying to be something it's not. And for someone that doesn't want to break the bank and just wants a motorcycle that is classic and comfortable, the Vulcan 1700 Voyager might be a good option. If you want an American V-twin touring motorcycle that describes the size of its engine in cubic inches instead of cubic centimeters, you are luckily not restricted to the offerings from Harley-Davidson. Indian also has their fair share of touring motorcycles in their lineup. The Indian Roadmaster is one of their top tier touring motorcycles that features just about everything you'd expect from a bike meant for cross country comfort, including a $30,000 price tag. Whoa. The Roadmaster is powered by a 116 cubic inch or 1890cc air-cooled V-twin engine. It's making a peak 92 horsepower and 116 foot-pounds of torque low down at 2,900 RPM. 
Like the touring machines who have come before it, the Roadmaster has plenty of luggage, comfortable seat and riding ergonomics, and a Radio Shack's worth of tech. It has a 7-inch display with navigation and smartphone connectivity, remote locking luggage, ride modes, heated grips, cruise control, you name it. Indian pretty much threw everything they had to offer at this motorcycle to make it an ideal touring machine for riders who have the money to spend but are scared of how powerful a BMW K1600 is. The base model Roadmaster has an MSRP of $30,499, which is kind of a big pill to swallow. If you want the Indian badge but want a bagger that is more stripped down in both style and price, there's also the Indian Challenger. While not specifically placed in their touring category, I am sure this motorcycle could tackle some longer miles as well as a Harley-Davidson Road Glide could. The Challenger definitely has some cooler and more modern looks than a Roadmaster. The looks aren't the only thing that is more modern though, the Challenger also features a liquid-cooled engine. The 108 cubic inch or 1768 cc V-twin makes 122 horsepower and 128 foot-pounds of Torgos. The Challenger, while not coming stock with trunk or passenger backrest, does have storage in the form of two hard cases. This bike is high quality fit and finish with some nice OEM components like Metzler tires and Brembo brakes. The Challenger also comes equipped with the same 7 inch display and integrated sound system, a USB charger and cruise control. All these features make the Challenger capable of being a touring bike without all the boomer energy that the Roadmaster has. The Challenger retails for $24,499. If you thought the Road Glide and the Street Glide motorcycles and Harley Davidson's were a little too stripped down, a little too lightweight, although they weigh over 800 pounds, maybe you should check out the Harley Davidson Ultra Limited. This is one of those bikes old dudes in the comment section or random people you meet in public say they ride. Like, I'll have the giveaway sports out at a gas station and some guy will say, Nice hog, brother, I ride an Ultra Limited. And then I just smile and say, cool man, because I don't know what an Ultra Limited is because that doesn't mean anything to me. So what the heck is a Harley Davidson Ultra Limited? This motorcycle uses the same HD Touring frame as the Road Glide, but most notably is outfitted with a 114 cubic inch engine that makes 100 horsepower and 122 foot pounds of torque. Other than the larger engine, the Ultra Limited also comes with the most luggage for touring with an included trunk and passenger backrest. The Ultra Classic also comes with some higher end paint finishes, something that is really important to Harley riders. Ends up coming in at 917 pounds wet and ready to ride and costs 29,169 bucks. That brings this tour of touring bikes to a close. What motorcycle would you happily ride thousands of miles into the sunset? Do we need to do a Yammy Noob touring giveaway where I have to ride a 900 pound touring bike thousands of miles to hand deliver it to the winner? Probably yes. Fact. During the Holocaust, Italian doctors invented a fake disease known as Syndrome K. They would diagnose Jewish patients with these diseases so that they would be placed in mandatory hospital quarantine and avoid capture from the Nazis. The doctors told the Nazis that Syndrome K was highly contagious and deadly. Goodbye. Keep, Keep watching, watching.